taken a look at two by two application problems, systems of linear equations, which we solve by either substitution or elimination method. And then we'll look at three by three linear systems. Those three by three systems are gonna be application problems as well. So these are all word problems and story problems. Problem number one, concert t-shirts. Samantha bought two small t-shirts and one large t-shirt for her friends. She paid $62. Her friend Emily bought one small and two large t-shirts and paid $83. What was the price of each t-shirt? Well, think about this. So we've got Samantha and Emily, we call them S and E, and then we're gonna have small and large. So you call that S and L. Now, the idea is that we gotta choose the variables and we gotta set up a two by two system. Two times S and one times L, that's Samantha, equals 62. One times S and two times L is equal to 83. So that means we should be able to find the price of each t-shirt. So let's let X be the price of a small t-shirt, Y be the price of a large t-shirt. So 2X plus Y is 62 and X plus 2Y equals 83. So how do we go from here? Suppose I use substitution from the first equation. In other words, I solve for Y is 62 minus 2X. Let's substitute that into the second equation, 62 minus 2X, so we get X plus two times 62 minus two X equals 83. Then we've got X plus, that's 124 minus four X equals 83. Let's combine the like terms. X plus negative four X is negative three X plus 124 equals 83. Let's subtract 124 from each side and divide by negative three. So we'll get negative three X equals negative 41 divide by negative three X equals 1367. That's $13.67 for a small t-shirt. Notice it's not an integer, but it is, you know, a number that rounds to the nearest hundredths, of course, because that's what we'd expect in the United States. If we plug that into the original Y equation here, 62 minus two times $13.67, that's 62 minus 27, 34, that's $34.66 for the large t-shirt for Y. So that's how we do a two by two system using substitution. Let's go problem number two, coffee drinks. At a cafe, Mia bought two lattes, three cappuccinos for $19.50. Later, Chloe bought three lattes, two cappuccinos for $20.55. Find the price of a latte and a cappuccino. We gotta think about this, right? Two times X plus three times Y should be 1950 and three times X and two times Y should be 2050. So if X is the latte price, Y is the cappuccino price, these would be our equations. Then how do we get on to solving this? Well, we could use a couple different methods, but I'm gonna suggest let's go ahead and use the elimination method. If we multiply the first equation by three and the second equation by two, we can eliminate on the X's. So three times the first equation is gonna give you six X, two times the second equation is gonna give you six X, but then you're gonna have nine Y on the first equation and then four Y on the second equation. And we should be able to subtract these equations, okay? So six X minus six X is gonna be nothing. Nine Y minus four Y is gonna be five Y. And then 58, 50 minus 41, when we subtract these, we get five Y equals 17.5 or 17.50. Divide by five, 3.5, so that's like $3.50. That's the cost of a cappuccino. How do we find the cost of a latte? Well, we have to plug into one of the earlier equations. I'd recommend plug into one of these two because the numbers are smaller. So plugging back in, sometimes calling back substituting, 2X plus three times 350 equals 1950. Three times 350 is 1050. Subtract 1050 from both sides. 2X is equal to nine. Divide by two, X is equal to 4.5. So it means a latte costs $4.50 US dollars, and then a cappuccino costs $3.50 US dollars. This time we use the elimination method, two by two system. Got the right answer, we'll move on. Okay, so here's problem three, babysitting hours. Alyssa babysat for the Johnson family and the Smith family. She earned $150 total. She charges $12 an hour for the Johnsons, 
$15 an hour for the Smiths. She worked a total of 12 hours. How many hours did she babysit for each family? So the idea is that she's gonna earn $150 total. So that's the total revenue gained, but then she charges differently for each of the families and she worked 12 total hours. So I think there's gonna be one line for X plus Y for the total number of hours, but then the next line is gonna be the revenue. So it's gonna be like 12X plus 15Y equals 150, right? So if X is the hours for the Johnsons, Y is the hours for the Smiths, X plus Y is 12, and then 12X plus 15Y equals 150. How do we solve this? Let's substitute from the first equation. So we can pretty easily subtract X, Y equals 12 minus X. Let's substitute that in to the second equation for Y. So we have 12X plus 15 times 12 minus X equals 150. That's 12X plus 180, distributing the 15, minus 15X equals 150. We can combine the like terms to get negative 3X, and then we have plus 180 equals 150. So let's subtract 180 from both sides, and then divide by negative 3. Negative 3X equals negative 30, divide by negative 3, X is 10. So that was 10 hours for the first family, the Johnsons. Now, how about for the Smiths? Y is going to be what's left over from adding X and then you get 12. So Y is going to be 2. So Y is equal to 12 minus 10. So two hours for the Smiths. So now we've completed the two by two systems. Let's get on to the three by three systems. where We have three equations, three unknowns, and we have to solve these by Again, substitution or elimination. Okay, problem four, smoothie recipes. At a smoothie bar, a berry blast has two strawberries, one banana, one scoop of protein. A tropical twist has one strawberry, two bananas, one scoop of protein. And finally, a power green has one strawberry, one banana, two scoops of protein. If Katie brought three berry blasts, two tropical twists, and one power green, but she also used 10 strawberries, eight bananas, eight scoops of protein, find the number of each fruit or protein in one serving. Let's think about kind of what's going on here. So what's gonna happen is we've got strawberries, bananas, scoops of protein, and then we've got three different types of drinks. And then we bought three, two, and then one of each of them. And then we also know how many of the components we used. So let's have a think about how we can go about solving this when we consider what X, Y, and Z are. So there's gonna be three unknowns because we have to know the number of fruit and protein in one serving. If we let X be the number of strawberries per drink, Y be the number of bananas per drink, and Z be the number of scoops of protein per drink, what are the recipes? Two, one, 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 two, one, and one, one, two. That's exactly what we see here for the smoothie bar recipes. Then, the totals used was 10, 8, and 8. So let's figure out how many strawberries we used, bananas we used, scoops of protein we used. Well, we used 10, 8, and 8, respectively. But then for the strawberries, notice we're going to do 2, 1, 1 because it's Berry Blast, Tropical Choice, Power Green. 2, 1, 1. But then on bananas, it's 1, 2, 1. So 1, 2, 1. And then finally, on the protein, it's 1, 1, 2 in terms of the coefficients. Then let's solve by elimination. So anytime you have a one there, you can just make it just the variable. And then via elimination, let's consider how we're gonna do this. So if we call these equations one, two, and three, it's a good idea to label these equations sequentially, one, two, and three, or maybe A, B, and C. So if you subtract equation two from equation one, the Z will eliminate. Z minus Z, that goes away. 10 minus eight is two. Two X minus X is X y minus 2y is going to be x minus y equals 2. Let's relabel that equation a. If we subtract equation 3 from equation 2, then we're going to have y minus z equals 0. Well, why is that? Because 8 minus 8 is 0, x minus x is nothing, 2y minus y is y, and then z minus 2z is negative z. So y minus z equals 0, that means y equals z. So we have equation a and equation b. Now how are we going to combine these? What we can say is, that x 
plus 2y plus y equals 8. So back here to equation 2, if z is just y, then x plus 2y plus another y, because z is just y, is 8. That's x plus 3y equals 8. And now take a look at equations a and c. Now we've reduced it to a 2 by 2 system. Well, now we can actually solve that by finding x by itself from equation a, add 2 over x equals y plus 2, substitute that into equation c. y plus 2 plus 3y equals 8. That's 4y plus 2 equals 8. Subtract 2 from both sides. 4y equals 6, y equals 1.5. But once y is 1.5, we know that z and y are both 1.5. Then x equals y plus 2, so 3.5. So the idea is that the number of fruit and protein in one serving is going to be the values of x, y, and z. So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on. Find the quadratic function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c passing through the points 1 comma 3, 2 comma 5, 3 comma 12. Now a, b, and c are constants, unknown, and we're not necessarily given the vertex, or we're not necessarily told if any of these are the vertex. So what we should do is we should plug these values in for x and y respectively, and then get three equations, three unknowns, each having a combination of a, b, and c. So if we plug them in, suppose we plug in x equals 1, then we're going to get a plus b plus c equals 3. Suppose we plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 times b is 2b plus c. Add those up is 5. Suppose we plug in 3. 3 squared is 9. b times 3, 3b. And then plus c equals 12. So now we have three equations, three unknowns. So we should solve this as a linear system. a plus b plus c is 3. 4a plus 2b plus c equals 5. 9a plus 3b plus c equals 12. So how are we going to do this? Let's subtract equation 1 from equation 2. 5 minus 3 is 2 on the right-hand side. 4a minus a is 3a. 2b minus b is b. c minus c is nothing. So we get 3a plus b equals 2. Let's call that Roman numeral little 1. Then let's think about another way. Maybe we can get this c to go away. What we can do is we can subtract equation 2 from equation 3. So 12 minus 5 is 7. c minus c is nothing. 3b minus 2b is b, and then 9a minus 4a is 5a. So we have 5a plus b equals 7. That's Roman numeral little 2. Subtract Roman numeral little 1 from Roman numeral little 2. So b minus b is nothing. 7 minus 2 is 5 on the right-hand side. 5a minus 3a, 2a. So that's 2a equals 5 divided by 2. a is 2.5. But if a is 2.5, Let's put that into equation, let's say, Roman numeral 1. So 3 times 2.5 plus b equals 2. That's 7.5 plus b equals 2. Subtract 7.5. b equals negative 5.5. And then finally, I would recommend, let's go back to this first equation. a plus b plus c is 3. So that's the easiest. So a is 2.5, b is negative 5.5, c is unknown at this point. 2.5 minus 5.5 is negative 3. And then c plus negative 3 is 3, add negative 3 to both sides, c is 6. So that means the parabola is 2.5x squared minus 5.5x plus 6. Now, this is the graph that we can confirm. Let's plot 1, 3, 2, 5, 3, 12, and let's plot this parabola on Desmos. So what I have shown here is the points 1, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 12. I have ax squared plus bx plus c. I set up some sliders and I put a to 2.5, b to negative 5.5, c to 6. And we see that the parabola perfectly goes through these points. So we have confirmed that we have the equation of the parabola in standard form from just three points. Remember, if you have power 2, you need at least minimum three points. If n is the largest power, then you need n plus 1 points. So that'd be three points. Okay, last problem we'll do here. Three friends, Anna, Bella, and Clara, go to a movie theater with three ticket types. Child, student, and adult. X, Y, and Z. Anna buys two student and one adult. She pays $27. Bella buys a child and two adults, $33. Clara buys a child, a student, and an adult, $26. Find the price of each ticket type. Well, I think this is relatively straightforward because if X, Y, and Z are the cost of a ticket type, we know the numbers of tickets each person bought. 
we should be able to set this up as a three by three system. So wouldn't this be like zero X plus two Y plus one Z equals 27? And then let's see, one X plus zero Y plus two Z equals 33. And then one X plus one Y plus one Z equals 26. So these are our equations, right? Now, how are we gonna solve this? Equation one can be pretty easily solved for Z by subtracting two Y. So this is z equals 27 minus 2y. Let's substitute that in to one of these other equations. So if you substitute it into equation 2, you've got x plus 2 times 27 minus 2y equals 33. So 2 times 27 is 54. 2 times negative 2y, negative 4y. Subtract 54 from both sides. x equals negative 4y equals negative 21. Add 4y to both sides. x equals 4y minus 21. Then Let's go ahead and substitute x into another equation, namely equation three. So we can substitute in for x and z because we have substitutions for both. So we'll be able to solve for y. 4y minus 21 plus y plus 27 minus 2y equals 26. Drop the parentheses. 4y, y, and minus 2y is 3y. Negative 21 plus 27 is positive 6 all equals 26. Subtract six from both sides. Three Y is equal to 20, divide by three. Y is 6.67. So $6.67 is the cost of a ticket for the students. How are we gonna find the other ones? Well, we can back substitute. So Z is defined in terms of Y. So it's 27 minus two times 6.67. So we do that, that's 27 minus 1334, we get 1366. So that's the cost of an adult ticket, right? Now last but not least, how about the child ticket? Well, that's X, and X is 4Y minus 21. That's four times 6.67 minus 21. 26, 68 minus 21 is $5.68. By the way, let's assume these are kind of like with tax, so it's not necessarily like you know, round numbers. Okay, so a child is $5.68, student is $6.67, adult is $13.66. Okay, so that concludes discussion of application problems solving using substitution or elimination. Okay, everyone, I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna let you all go. Have a great day.